This is video three on chapter five from your operating systems textbook. In this video, we'll be covering section four of chapter five on monitors. Uh, first, we'll define what monitors are, give some characteristics, and deal with some of the problems that crop up when we're trying to deal with synchronization of monitors. So a monitor is a programming language construct that provides equivalent functionality to that of semaphore, but is easier to control. The monitor construct has been implemented in a number of programming languages, including Concurrent Pascal, Pascal Plus, Modula 2, Modula 3, and Java. It's also been implemented as a program library. This allows programmers to put a monitor lock on any object. In particular, for something like a linked list, you may want to lock all linked lists with one lock, or have one lock for each list, or have one lock for each element of each list. Uh, now, a monitor is a software module consisting of one or more procedures, an initialization sequence, and local data. So, the chief characteristics of a monitor are the following. The local data variables are accessible only by the monitor's procedures, not by any external procedures. So, we also have to ensure that a process enters the monitor by invoking one of its procedures, and only one process can be executing in the monitor at any time and the other processes that have invoked the monitor are blocked, waiting for the monitor to become available. Now, by enforcing the discipline of one process at a time, that's how the monitor is able to provide mutual exclusion. A monitor supports synchronization by the use of condition variables that are contained within the monitor and accessible only within the monitor. Condition variables are a special data type in monitors which are operated on by two functions. Now, these are going to sound familiar from our discussion of semaphores, but there are differences, so wait till the end of the uh, slide here and we'll talk about those. But the C wait tells us the monitor to suspend execution of the calling process on condition C. The monitor is now available for use by another process. And C signal resumes the execution of some process blocked after a C wait on the same condition. If there are several such processes, we choose one of them, and if there's no such process, we just don't do anything. So, again, the monitor wait and signal operations are different from those of the semaphore. So, if a process in a monitor signals and no task is waiting on the condition variable, the signal is just lost, as opposed to a semaphore, which increments the semaphore. In this case, the signal just gets lost. This figure illustrates the structure of a monitor. Although a process can enter the monitor by invoking any of its procedures, we can think of the monitor as having a single entry point that's guarded so that only one process can be in the monitor at a time. Other processes that attempt to enter the monitor join a queue of processes blocked waiting for monitor availability. Now once a process is in the monitor, it may temporarily block itself on condition X by issuing C wait and passing in X. It's then placed in a queue of processes waiting to re-enter the monitor when the condition changes and resume execution at the point in its program following the C-wait call. If a process that's executing in the monitor detects a change in the condition variable X, it issues C-signal X, which alerts the corresponding condition queue that the condition has changed. And that concludes our very short introduction to monitors. Our next and final video in Chapter 5 will cover Section 5 of Chapter 5 in your Operating Systems textbook, and we'll talk about message passing.